Welcome to today's quick play, and I am playing Super Monaco Grand Prix on the Spectrum, a Sega game. Good graphics, look at that. A Sega game which was released in 1991 on the Spectrum. It came out in 1990 on the Mega Drive, and it came out on in 1989 in the arcade on Sega's X-Board hardware. Look at these graphics, I'm well impressed. Bouncing engines, schematics. Awesome. And I had this game on the Master System, but I recently saw it in Retro Gamer, and it looked amazing on the Spectrum. Let's redefine the keys. Accelerate, brake, left, right, uh, gear, space. Uh, okay, we can choose uh, transmission. The colours look pretty good, don't they? Sam, baby, look. Above Spectrum ability. But this is quite a late Spectrum game, I guess. This is 91, so people were starting to get hang of the hardware to quite an extent. Now this game is based, well it's not based, it's the sequel to Su uh, Monaco Grand Prix, uh, which was a 1979 arcade release. It was a top-down release. Uh, so you viewed from above, of course. And when this came out, people were like, oh my god, scaling sprites and craziness at the side of the track and loads going on. And it got ported to the home computers. And I mean, look at it. We've got a rear view mirror, which is awesome, and it chugs along at quite a reasonable pace, doesn't it? And the creator of this, I can't remember his name, uh, but he wasn't too happy about this this game, apparently, in, in an interview in Retro Gamer. He was like, no, oh, I wasn't impressed by what I've created. I don't know what, it looks pretty damn spot on. It scrolls at about the same pace as Chase HQ does on the Specky, which is a great game. Got some reasonable engine effects. We've got some nice squealing from the brakes there. Although the, uh, the rear view mirror does seem to be receding at quite a pace compared to how my forward facing projection. It's some sort of time dilation there where where I've been is going at a higher rate of time. God knows. I imagine it's probably just a quirk in the graphics because it's a smaller window scrolling rather than some crazy explanation. We need to use the brakes in the corner. If we don't use the brakes then we do seem to... Oh god, it's quite hard to get into the corners. Oh! Oversteer, understeer, all sorts of steer. Mainly... Ah! Understeer by the look of it. I think there's a... this is qualifying, that's why there's no cars around me. The actual uh, home ports, I mean the Mega Drive port added a lot to the arcade release. It added multiple tracks and championship options. Although the graphics weren't up to the arcade X, um, X board, it was still pretty damn good. Where am I? 11th? Oh my god. Prepare to race at France. So oh, I am prepared. Yeah, what's this stands out from the Master System uh, version? The Master System version is set behind the car, and it's always in a split screen mode, which is distracting to say the least. And it wasn't, it didn't really seem like Super Monaco Grand Prix at all. Whereas this does seem very much like Super Monaco Grand Prix. It's like a wistful skidding sound. And we've got the background there, we've got the buildings which look reminiscent of Monaco. We haven't got much going on at the side of the track, but then what do you expect? Not sure if there's a tunnel in this version. That would be nice to see, wouldn't it? I've always, I always liked the tunnel. That made it feel like the track wa trap was the trap. The track was Monaco. Because it's not an authentic recreation of the Monaco track, clearly. It, not even on the arcade or the Mega Drive version. But that tunnel did make it seem like it was at Monaco. Like the races you witnessed on TV with Nigel Mansell speeding around in his Williams Renault. That sounds like a bomb. Whoa, it's a bit hard to get out of the way of the cars. That's the problem with these early races. The cars do seem to take up an awful lot of the track when you get close to them. I've got some nice uh, s scaling techniques go going on there. It's fairly progressive. We haven't just got one massive car and one tiny dot in the distance. There's a few variations of the sprite. 
got some nice colouring on the barrels there, but, well, the barrels, the tyres at the side. Lap time 115! Come on, man! Uh, the, the sequel to this game on uh, the Mega Drive was endorsed by Ayrton Senna, of course, who subsequently died, which was a tragic shame. But it didn't add much to the first game. The first games were quite complete. I actually really quite like this. Controls aren't too bad when you get a hang of it. It's quite tricky. We do seem to have quite a high difficulty level here. There's no tunnel on this course. We're on lap two out of three already, which is disappointing. It might be on a different course. Oh, we're in France at the moment, aren't we? Of course. This isn't even the Monaco um, track. I imagine the background is fairly the same for most of the courses. I want to get to Monaco. I want to see if we've got a tunnel. That means I need to do fairly well in this race, don't I? Or find a quicker way of getting... Oh my god! Come back here, you lemon bastard! Come on! Come on! I'm gonna get you. Here, little car! Nice chunk of tire in your face. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Concentrate. God damn it, man. I've still got another lap to go. It's nice to see the cars in the background in my rear view mirror. That is a nice touch. I missed that massively on the Master System one. It just didn't feel like a proper rate what a proper simulation racing game. It felt just like any other Master System racer. Chase HQ is pretty poor on the Master System as well. Not a patch on the Sinclair Spectrum version. Uh, I might have a go at playing this on the Amstrad actually in a bit because it looks really colourful on the Amstrad. And some games did make a. Most games were conversions from the Spectrum, but some games made a lot of use of the Amstrad's increased colour palette. And it looks like something which is worthy of checking out. This is fairly sedate, this game. It's good. But you don't need a very high level of concentration to race around this track. You do need to use brakes. Letting your finger off the accelerator just doesn't seem to cut it. Maybe it's because I'm not taking the, the proper racing line. I'm kind of sticking... Fatal crash! <laughs> what happened? Can I change... No, we're not going. I, I want to go into Monaco. I'm not going to get there, am I? My dreams and fantasies are ruined. We're going to have to leave it here. I'm, oh, I'm disappointed to say the least. Thanks for watching Super Monaco Grand Prix Quick Play on the Sinclair Spectrum. Uh, join me soon for another one. Thanks and goodbye.